Hello, welcome back to a very special episode of the Commander's Field Manual. I'm Jade Star. And I'm Guapa Moment. Uh, and today... Oh, today we've got some leeway of stuff to do. We've cleared out the Avatar project, the board is clean, we got all sorts of fun things to do. Uh, supply drop in two days, and I have just enough intel to cover the rest of Oceana. Australia. So what do we have left to do? I know we did, like, a base raid a while ago that went... Quite swimmingly, as I, Guavamo, was very impressed with that mission. Got an urgent communication coming in for you now. Uh, well, once the councilman is finally done being respectful, because look at that, no alien activity. <laughs> look at that, look at that, yeah. Ass, part of, you shadowy jerk. Part of me was expecting, I had high hopes for you, Commander, <laughs> and you have disappointed me completely. Right. Get bent. He is such a dick. Um... As that big red imminent sign might hit, that's what we're going to be doing today. But in the broader spectrum of things, uh, really we just have some shadow chamber research to unlock and then try to find the final Holy mission. shit. Yeah, that's a lot of supplies. Avenger plotting new course. Um, do, 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 do. I think that amount of supplies is going to let me build everything I can possibly think of and then still have extra left over. Like, you know you're near the end of the game when it's like, I'm actually running out of stuff to do with piles of supplies. You know you're nearing the end of the game when you can make this a business. I mean, XCOM has always been a business. Ever since the start, I remember my days of, you know, just funneling plasma rifles onto the black market. Yeah, yeah, and not yeah. asking too many questions about who were buying them or what they were being put towards. Oh no, the aliens are using black market missiles against me. How did Setting this happen? For the Australian <laughs> sector. I also would like to imagine, like, you know, some, like, cartel or, uh, what's the term? Junta, Junta, in, you know, some... Junta. Junta. Yeah, in some place, it's just trying to overthrow a local government with plasma rifles, and the government's <laughs> like, what the fuck is this green shit? Where did the rebels get this crap from? What can I do for you, I'm just, I'm just now imagining the mafia kneecapping people with highly advanced fucking stun, stun rods and shit. Man, imagine, like, actual, like, ridiculous civilian applications. Like, imagine arming paper boys with blaster bomb launchers that launch, like, just the newspaper rolled up on a waypoint system. That'd be kind of cool, but I've also imagined there'd be some critical failures that just, you know, <laughs> and a, a newspaper-sized hole in some person's house. I mean, you know, that's not much worse than the NES Paperboy game, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so this is entirely too late for it to really make a difference. But I had 800 supplies and no freaking clue what I was going to do with them. So I'm just going to build a second Psy tank and train up another Psy dude. <laughs> uh, it, it is really too late in the game to do that. Um, as you were telling me before recording, I could just delay. I could just sit on the overmap and let Avatar progress tick up and ignore mission sites. And just, just to train a second Psy person as much as I wanted to. I'm not going to do that, but... Upgrade. Really, we're at the point where I have the entire tracker to go. I could just sit there and do nothing for the next, like, three months of game time to train up a second Psy oh, operative. Upgraded. Well, that would be pretty impressive because I, Guava Moment, when I first played this game, didn't really have the, you know, opportunity to set up a Psy guy. I think I got to, like, the second to last mission and I just got my... the third skill on my Psy operative. Yeah, you, it's... You can definitely easily miss out on getting up a Psy tank early in the game and have it come later and by the time you've got a really trained up Psy person the game's almost over like right now the game's almost over blast uh, hard cheese I like that guy uh, Nidian uh, was the hero sniper from the first LP so I was tempted to recruit oh, nice. her uh, also I see Kaboom Dragoon are you just gonna let him sit in the Sky Ranger and do nothing <laughs> Uh, no, he's not going to get picked. I, I just uh. had fun looking through all these people. Blast hard cheese. A couple people went with the space mutiny names. Really appreciate that one, guys. I see a model Canadian. Manor comes around. <laughs> yeah, Manor comes around. Is there? Uh, so eventually I figured there was only one candidate of who needs to be put in the side tubes. Now I'm curious. Psychic Granola. All Psychic right. Granola, yes. Also, I do enjoy how you have Goku's decapitated head on your trophy wall. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit weird. I, like, Tygen, I think we needed that, like, in the lab for research. No? Okay, no, whatever. no, it's fine, Commander. <laughs> this will be a good way to improve the morale of our team. Morale? Sure. Let's go with that. Morale. Alright, what's the mission name this time? 
<laughs> That's appropriate. Yeah, I like that one. So, 11 enemies, all pretty high-end, except, uh, oh no, there was a gatekeeper. Okay, so that's the worst we're gonna see. It's pretty standard until the gatekeeper. Uh, I always keep wondering what the hell a gatekeeper is. Why didn't they just call it a cyber disc? Well, because it's not a disc. Well, a cyber s sphere. Yeah. And call it a cyber sphere or something we're familiar with. All right, are we gonna see a gunslinger uh, sniper here? We're gonna have, you know, blue screen runs and everything to deal with all this bullshit? We're gonna have half of that. We're gonna have James Dean nope. with the explosives and the blue screen rounds. Uh, but no, uh, Margatini is just too awesome. Sorry, dude. Suck a dick. Like, I, I'm just not well, feeling the gunslinger. When I can have a sniper with something absurd like 132A in the Icarus suit jump around and pot shot people and just be my solution to every problem, I don't need a gunslinger. And I do appreciate the fact that we basically have Ultraman on our team. I mean, <laughs> the Arbor aesthetic design is, is something special on it, yeah. Eliminate all enemy oh, units oh, oh. and protect those civilians. Advent oh, that's great. So did we. Okay. You won't have a concealed position for deployment on this one. Oh, that's right. I have Talo, though, so I do have a partially concealed position. So at least I have a scout for a terror mission. And that's actually super nice. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you about how, uh, when I first played the game, I I think I went th halfway through the game and started sh training a, uh, a scout that actively just walks around and scouts the area, and just knowing where everything is and also having stealth captures on terror missions such as this is really good, despite being a man down on a gun. Uh, you mean, when you say stealth captures, you mean just stealthily, like, talking to the civilians, right? Yeah, just welcome to say, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do that in a turn or two with Talo, and it's not something I ever really thought of doing before bothered trying but yeah when he can just run around and rescue civilians without the aliens activating or detecting him it's actually really nice it's also kind of nice knowing that those three aren't faceless because that would put a whole crimp in the whole plan of uh running around this saving one civilians. right here is faceless isn't he uh the nearby one nah okay I was just gonna say, with uh, really with some of the luck we've seen in this LP, that being like a glitch in every fucking mission. It's, it's not a glitch. It's just faceless or everywhere, jerks. I'm not gonna lie, I do miss the old crystalline design. Yeah. Both of the old designs. Both of them. Uh, like XCOM '80s one and also uh, Neo XCOM. Do you mean '90s? 90s. It was 94. Was Gollop's one was in 94. Yeah. I don't know, I like the original design of just this really terrifying looking beetle. Yeah, I right. For, I have a fondness for the uh, reboot XCOM's like weird bug looking thing. I don't know what it, I don't know about what, what it is with these guys. They're not, I'm not really feeling it. Wait, what one do you think is the reboot one that wasn't the previous game? The previous game's ones were also quadruped. Well, they were, it's just that the face was a lot better. Oh, okay. Yeah. These new ones are just kind of. Eh. I'd have to alien. see us. I'd have to see a side by side comparison because I think these guys look pretty much the same as they did in the previous game. But my memory sounds right. It's like eighty percent difference, but the 80, the twenty percent that went no away, problem, I was fond. I was fond of. Hmm. Okay. It's effectively splitting hairs. Who cares? So I really wish I could kill zone them, but I don't think that's going to work out so well with the cliff. So I gotta. Sure thing kind of figure out something else to do. But unfortunately, the the whole cliff providing a line of sight break is really ruining a couple of my opportunities to deal with this pack of chrysalids. What was going on with Mandor there? He had like three different particle effects. What? Oh, uh, the, the purple that keeps happening. Uh, you can kind of see that it's centered around Shell Shock. She has solace, which means anybody within four squares uh, has any sort of uh, psionic impairments from them removed. So if they're That's... panicked or mind controlled or disoriented or whatever, she moves next to them and she clears it. Nice. That's really good. Yeah, super good skill. It's a little bit more useful if you could somehow get it like super early on to deal with like sectoids mind fraying you or mind spinning you at the, uh, the start of the game. But now it's still good as a way of preventing mind control from things like gatekeepers or avatars. 
Yeah, I feel like they want you to have psionics way earlier than you're feasibly able to get it. Oh, you can totally have psionics very early in the game. It just requires specifically spending your resources towards that goal. Because hmm. the uh, the GTC, the AWC... Oh, wait, this. I love this. Nice. <laughs> oh, that was so good. So cinematic. That's some fucking, uh... That's some movie maker bullshit there. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm definitely going back and clipping that one. Um, so the AWC, the Scilab, the GTC, um, are all things that you can kind of focus on one way or other at the start of the game. Which one you want to get towards. Um, this unit is relatively agile. And really, you probably could have the Psy tank up before the AWC. Because the AWC will give you the, the hidden traits... But it's really early and people might not be promoted enough to take advantage of them. But it does cut down healing time. So it's kind of like, do I want healing time or do I want to start training up a single Psy soldier? Yeah, I do gotta say that the uh, AWC is really good because I go off a moment didn't uh, do that on my first playthrough. And I was just wondering... And I was like just wondering build it at all like, or put the uh, retroactive mod in? The retro... Or, I, I know I didn't have any of the skills that are just like, oh, you get a skill for free. And I was just... Oh, okay. No problem. How the hell one of my friends got all this crazy bullshit. Right. Yeah, that's that's the AWC. And it was, we've s talked about it a little bit in the thread that um, the way the game base defaults handling uh, retroactive skills is kind of flawed. Everyone's supposed to get one, but if they... Per and it's all assigned to a random rank. So if they go past that rank... And then you build the AWC. Without the mod, they won't get it. It would just be a, a lost opportunity. That's why all of my people have an AWC assigned random skill. Because the mod says, okay, even if they're past the point it would normally be, we're going to retroactively check and make sure that they get it. See, that's good line. Unlike, um, say, for example, Darkest Dungeon mods, which are just, you know, awful. <laughs> okay, so we saw one... Chris would run away, so unfortunately I'm using Manhor here as bait, but there's people on Overwatch. So we saw this guy run away and burrow, or at least I heard him burrow. And I figured Manhor is in the war suit, and he's got a med kit, so he's not gonna get poisoned. We'll use him as bait, but then everybody misses their Overwatch. Oh. No. Margatini doesn't miss shots. She doesn't miss. Why did she miss the target, then? Oh, because Shell Shock missed. Oh, right. You can tell which one's Margatini because she's the one not speaking English. I'm on the move. That's right. You. I don't know what it was, but for whatever reason, when I enabled uh, national voices, it didn't go. Really? How weird. I mean, I guess this is like a retroactive Jake Fixer game. <laughs> but if it's working for me and not for you, I think it's on your end, buddy. Yeah. Probably. our civilian counter at. Oop. Something stomped through the building. Uh, two civilians in a building, apparently. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta start capturing. Or, well, not cap. Saving. It's capturing. Who are we kidding here? <laughs> Get out of here! But this is definitely nice, because I know I should be close to whatever pod just shot that person in the shroud, but knowing that I can put Tallow up there and not have him activate... And he's got two more civilians to save. It is really nice. And I haven't seen them, so I know I can safely okay. dash in advance. And saving time on terror missions is a good thing. You don't want to fall behind in the uh, the civilian race. I, have a... I don't think I've ever seen a situation where they kill more than, like, four dudes. It's weird. I've had maps go where they get... They've gotten six. And it becomes very close to failure. Well, then again, I'm playing on normal mode, so there's probably a distinct difference here. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to affect the AI in quite the respect that you mean. They'll usually kill one civilian a turn. Or they'll make one attack on a, on a civilian a turn. And usually that's a kill. Occasionally you'll see them miss, which is like a 5% chance or something. But you can pretty safely assume that unless you clear the board of civilians near alien pods, they're going to kill one a turn. I'm also kind of surprised you're not using eating only apples here. Then again, I think you need your A-team here. 
Um, I could have. Uh, James Dean's still actually not a colonel, so I just wanted to try to get him to be a colonel. That was just rude. Like, come on, I see you guys. Come on, activate and, like, move towards me. We're losing civilians left and right, oh, Commander. Bradford. We need to get these people out of here. Bradford, we've done this mission, like, five times. Just leave it to us. We got this. And then that guy just disappears. Wait, what? Oh, shit. I don't know. Uh... Okay. And those those other guys are there. And I'm thinking, what the hell, why didn't the other guys disappear? And then it's like, oh, right, Tyler, wait. Where did they go? What? Oh, there they oh. are. Okay. Oh, because it's Tylo, I think, is the reason I can see those guys at all. Alright, so I need three civilians. There's three of them right here. I don't think I'm going to get to the one on the right without activating the pod. But I can make sure I don't lose due to civilian death pretty easily. And then panic what? from... The civilian ran past the Solace Aura from Shellshock. <laughs> okay. So the, I guess they're technically in a panicked state as like their default while moving around the map. And I guess walking past my Psy Trooper absolved them of panic. It, it's not an interaction that is meaningful or does anything, but it's kind of funny to think that is a thing. Oh, you know what would be really interesting if this game had, like, enough programming put into it? If, you, like, if you were able to move your Psy operative next to a civilian, cure their panic, and then give them a gun. <laughs> it's like, take this pistol. You're being recruited. I mean, that just kind of sounds like Syndicate. Like, you just the Persuadatron. You just zap people. You're say. like, oh, you're on my side now. Pick up that gun and let's go shoot some people. Syndicate. What game was that? It was Syndicate. For well, I mean, like, what? PC, like, in the early 90s. And then oh, later yeah, on, that's... PlayStation 1 or 2, and then later on, that was Syndicate Wars. And then it was, like, Agent Distance Weight Unit in the new Syndicate for PC. His name was Miles Kilo, okay? He's Agent Distance Weight. Look, um, with some of the games I've played, I don't, I don't think that hits anywhere on the stupid name book. radar. <laughs> Let me tell you about uh, the story of, uh... Julian's Edge way Maverick. too... <laughs> Edge Maverick. Yup. Japan is dumb with naming conventions sometimes. So, this was unfortunate. I charged Julian forward to get Hunter Protocol, hopefully on the group that I knew about, and then I found a gatekeeper. Also, that was really unfortunate. I, I think that's honestly the first time I've seen a civilian reaction move draw enemy Overwatch. I mean, it's nice that I don't have to worry about Overwatch anymore, but it just killed a civilian. Uh, this move, I wanted to get on this side of the, uh, the golf ball, the, the southwest from this perspective, I'd say, and then fire the Shredstorm cannon and hit the, uh, the golf ball, the shield bearer, and the trooper. But I can't... From where I am, good to move around. I can't get quite the... I want it to be in just one giant line, you know what I mean? Uh, so instead, I'm going to have to do it this way. And just hit the two more valuable targets. Except the shield bearer is being incredibly finicky about not being highlighted for oh some reason. Oh my god, come on. There. Yeah, right there. I don't understand why this works, because now he's just firing it in the air. Look at this. <laughs> okay. Like, what the fuck was that? Well, that was like a, a, a vertical spray. Like, a vertical cone. I could mind oh. control something. Mind control the golf ball? Uh, I would like to, but the odds of success on that are a little bit lower than I want to give a try. I, 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 I mean, this is okay. the game where will doesn't affect your psi abilities. That's right. No, yeah, it totally does. Really? Yeah. Yeah, will is offense. Um, yeah, it's opposed. So I could try it. I think it's, what, 66% chance to mind control the golf ball. Um, if there wasn't so much other shit around on the map, I would totally give it a try. But I don't want it to fail and then have nothing to show for my action and then have to deal with a mech and, like, four soldiers. Under my protection. Why could you mind control a civilian? I think I could stasis the civilian. Oh, okay. That's a good call, honestly. Get that thing off the field and just deal with the other flak. Right, so now I have a Lancer, a mech, 
a shield bearer. No, shield bearer died to the, the shred storm cannon. Yeah, that shield uh, bearer has about 50 hey, yeah. spikes in his face right now. So now I have a much more manageable outcome, although I don't have the great shot I was hoping for here. Oh. I do have an Asens in the hole, but nothing's really gathered up. And now if there's anything I'm going to blaster bob, it's going to be the gatekeeper. But I don't want to hit it solo, and also it's in stasis, so, uh, yeah. That's how it's oh, done. wait, Manhor has holo targeting? Yeah, I forgot that too until he shot that guy. <laughs> That's kind of fucking busted, actually. Yeah, is he, I, I freaking go back and mouse over his abilities. Like, oh yeah, Manhor had holo targeting. That's great. No, holo targeting is great on the support, just because they're not a real high damage thing. And if Fucking you're not needing them to heal or hack on that given turn, having them take a shot and holo target something is actually pretty good. Yeah. I, I honestly feel like holo targeting should have been a support ability. If, it just doesn't really fit a heavy, to, in my opinion. Yeah, it, it's, it definitely seems like more of a support, I don't know, genre of it. Like, of ability rather than, like, a heavy... But it's been on the heavy since, you know, the first game. Yeah. So, uh, Jake made a call, and it's fine. It works, it just feels confusing, that's all. Wow. Okay. Wait, what, what were those blue plasma balls shooting out of it? Get it together! Blue screen rounds. Oh! Well, that makes sense, actually, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, usually a little hard to notice, but yeah, the, the ammos will change the effects of the projectiles you shoot. Somebody got four. Yeah, and Tallow is right there. This is gonna suck. What? Oh, that's bullshit. They've got eyes on you. I mean, it, yes, it is bullshit, but. It's not really. I mean, it was a faceless. That's yeah. what faceless do. That's what you have to be aware of. I knew the risks. Also, kill zone, still going. Yeah, kill zone is so busted. I love that skill. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm glad of a moment, I hate that skill, why aren't we using face-off? <laughs> it's better, I don't know why, but it's better. Unfortunately, they are not particularly happy with Pargatini up there. Ow. Ooh, you have a... she's also marked. Yeah, she is marked and been shot. And... And the beatings only continue. Yeah, that's shredded armor too, so she is hurting. Oh, okay. Then. Yeah, thankfully this guy is out of range or something. And look at that. Four armor, one damage. I could take those hits all day. Yeah, but Jade, Bulwark is terrible. Why'd you pick it? Because, like, oh. right there, I can nullify damage. What? Yeah, it worked. Bullshit, because... Fucking... I've had that thing live rock like 30 times and it never did a thing. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> It, I'm it, so mad right now. It's a willpower check, and troopers don't have the best willpower. Okay. It's not gonna work on a lot of things. Oh, what? That, that sucked. Bad. It crit Tallow, and then the car exploded as well. I mean, it killed the officer for me. I would have liked it if it had done that before the officer marked and shot my sniper. Uh, things are looking bad for the Duke boys. Did you bring uh, a healer? Yeah, man horn. Okay. So, step one, heal the person at one health. Oh, wow. That's fortunate. Yeah, she almost bit it. I mean, I usually do a much better job of not being shot during the course of the LP, so you don't really see this, but... I almost had a turn where I only took two attacks and almost lost a colonel level sniper. This is why I don't let aliens shoot. Because if they feel like tar targeting the same person and hitting with both attacks, even in, you know, end game <laughs> armor, two attacks could be the end of it. Man, Implacable's really good. What's it contested by on the upgrade chart? Uh. Bladestorm. The Ugh, yeah. sword attack things in melee range. Laser Storm okay. could be useful, it would be nice. It's no close quarter specialist like the first game where you take a shotgun shot at someone within four. So, Implacable is just straight the better choice. Oh, excuse me. 
Oh, this root beer is getting to me. Ah, some nice, I noticed. Fine Henry Weinhardt's root beer today. Ah, it's crisp, yeah, a little clean, smooth. No problem, boss. Like, little behind the scenes info about these elves. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Jade is, Jade is like some kind of eldritch being, because my god, I've never heard you humans make that kind of noise. <laughs> I think my, uh, my post, or I pre recording butterflies slash beltings has, has become common knowledge now. Alright, so what do I got? I got four things. One of them's panicked. One of them's a gatekeeper. I need to clean this shit up. I already burned overdrive on Julian. I see a solution. I got this. Oh. I got this. I'll comply. The big, uh, the only big problem is gonna be making sure that gatekeeper dies. Alright, so if you don't see the solution yet, you're about to. Because cereal, plus a sniper with a 100% chance to hit everything. <laughs> okay, yeah. 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 Cereal was in XCOM 1, right? Who, did, who had it then? Uh, mm, not quite. Um, in XCOM 1, there was In the Zone, which oh, was yeah, passive, and it was any time you killed an enemy that was either flanked or out of cover, you got your action refunded. So you had to shoot things like chrysalids or cyber discs that didn't take cover, or you had to flush things out of cover to take full advantage of it. Or floaters, because floaters would just be in the air and then you shoot them. God, Marcatini's busted. What is this? I know, it's so good. Wow, what? Yep. So, uh, everything's dead and there's a the 6 HP gatekeeper over there. I think I got this. Please tell me you use one of your side abilities and accidentally spear a civilian. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna like null lance uh, a civilian. So there was fortress as I went through the burning crates. Um, basically because side troopers don't level up through kills or experience, and because their abilities are on cooldowns and so powerful, I tend to use them as safety nets, like I take this shot with James Dean. If he had landed, it would have killed, but it was a 50-50, which was, eh. Yeah. So, I'm gonna take the, I don't know, more disposable actions first, and then if I have to, go ahead and use this eye. Like, I'm not really showing off everything Shellshock can do, but having her here means I have an ace up my sleeve, like, almost every turn. She can stasis like she did, Void Rift to just nuke an area. That was just straight guaranteed 5 damage. Uh, no Lance is a big heavy hitter, especially if you can spear multiple people with it. Okay. She's just got so much in her uh, repertoire that it's just it, it's a trump card. It's an ace in the hole. It's, if my regular guys can't shoot it with bullets, she has something for the situation. I was going to recommend um, Manhor using Mark Target, but that would. I don't think that would help much against a uh, Gatekeeper, would it? Uh, hollow Targeting does help against Gatekeepers. They're annoying that they have so much defense. And yes, absolutely, if you have a high defense target, shoot them with Hollow wow, Targeting look, first. Look at the spike. Like yeah, this is where I started getting worried. Because I think they are at five kills, and I'm at four rescues. So I have blown up a lot of their stuff but I haven't saved enough civilians I'm compelled to agree. and I thought this was going to trigger like I thought that mech was on the edge as like a pod what? but it's just by itself and I don't know why what the heck that's so weird yeah I thought it was going to be attached to something else because there was the chrysalid pod, the gatekeeper pod the first advent pod and the second advent pod No, wait, no, no, there was two Advent, no, it was Chrysalids, Gatekeeper, and the Mech Pod for nine enemies. Almost time for a reload. And then there's just this guy hanging out in the back, like, what the hell? I don't... Is he a leftover? Because he didn't activate or anything, like, I... He was already was... active, so something, ar he was already part of a pod? Hey, I don't know. quite know what his deal is. No, for as much as I said about... Shellshock being Don't a safety net. I just wanted to have some fun here. Shameless on a stun lancer. 
Yeah, I'd already kind of shot the stun lancer. If you can get a good dominate on a target early on in a map, it can make life a lot easier. Just just by virtue of having seven soldiers rather than six. Getting it done. Uh, I do love the fact that concealed is a free action. Oh yeah, absolutely. Great. Is there any way to tell if an action is free or not? Like in the core game, because I have yes, a lot absolutely. Of so you see how Icarus? Wait, actually, no. Icarus jump. Why does it have the little dash and then line? That's that's not how that works. So, but normally when you pull up these actions, uh, there's a little icon. It'll either say like the chevron, which means it takes an action, or like the chevron and then a line, which means it ends your turn. I don't know why Icarus jump has it improperly labeled, but here, see, throw EMP. It has the little chevron and the line on the right. I went by that way too fast. Also, um. Oh, Oops. What? Did you... What? It's turning into a massacre out there, Commander. What did you kill? That camp is getting wiped out. The EMP bomb set off a gas tank or something underneath one of these stands that a civilian was standing on and exploded and killed a civilian. Well, I guess this really is based on that movie, The Core, where you can hack people with grenades cover. and then blow them up. I mean, that's one of my favorite abilities I haven't used on Shellshock yet, uh, Fuse. Because I love just detonating enemy explosives. Okay, so I need... I need both civilians. And there's one right behind that faceless. If it <laughs> takes its turn and just jumps down and claws that civilian, I lose. Good to go. That thing is so dead. <laughs> I mean, you say that, but it's so far away and at the end of my turn. I didn't have anything to get to it. You... You idiot. No! Kill the civilian! Why are you going for Marketini? I mean, I guess it's got low HP. God, she's gonna be in... She's gonna be in sick bay for like a solid month. Yeah. How are you still standing? Oh, oh yeah. no, you got like a little ledge. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I do and why to finish this. Because this, this faceless is the last thing. We know how many enemies there were thanks to the Shadow Chamber. So I'm trying to figure out what I was doing. I think I was just trying to set him up to be killed by somebody that wasn't Colonel level. Oh, you know what would have been stellar? Punching him off the roof into the fire? No, no, even better. What if you fuse the grenade on the advent belt that you're oh, 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 that would be <laughs> mean. I like that. That would have been savage. Uh, instead, I think I'm just gonna feed this kill to man whore. Nope. Or not. Miss the target. Or am I? What? Hair trigger! Really good, really good weapon mod. I love hair trigger. Because I go off a moment like RNG skills, and I'm totally not salty about a certain contacts. ruler that got the killed in one shot. No, <laughs> I've gotten over that. I've accepted things. I love how few things I've killed with a repeater in this LB, but I got the <laughs> one thing that matters more than anything else. What is that Skyraider skin? Is it still a uh, sectopod? Yeah. Yes, this last video, man. Come on. Oh, right. You're repeating yourself in your old age there, Baba. Oh, no. Wow, only seven days wounded? What? That's because I have a staffed AWC. If oh. I didn't, that, that would have been 14 days. Bunch of corpses, but it doesn't really actually mean anything to me at this point. Hello, Commander. Sell those to, like, conventions and watch people go nuts at the special effects. <laughs> Comic-Con this year is going to be rad. <clears throat> Man, if I could go as a gatekeeper and actually be floating, just sitting on like a giant <laughs> sphere, just floating around, like, yeah, what's up, bitches? That'd be awesome. Uh, I would have ended there, but I felt a couple videos in a row where it's just the mission. Nah, we're, we're gonna get some plot in at the end of this video before, before we go home. Oh boy, I'm glad that I get to see plot for once, and I'm not preoccupied by hockey. I know, it's good times. Not think I could have predicted this outcome. What the hell is it is again? Intriguing. Grandma and Mark threes. Ah. Central claims to have seen one of these things up close back in the day. 
Despite a lot of speculation, there was no pilot to be found once we pried it open. These might have helped Empanada hack a little bit better, but you suck, Empanada! Enjoy your new avatar! <laughs> I'm so glad that you did that. <laughs> it looks all smooth and rounded now. I don't, I don't know how to feel about that. Uh, we, we gotta replace the we gotta replace the one that we sent through the portal and had it fucking explode. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's just a little this limp. fearsome creature. That thing is long dead. referred to as a berserker. Is clearly a genetic relation to the other mutant species we have encountered in the field. For reasons yet unknown, this particular variant is unique in that it is altogether consumed by what can only be described as blind rage, a thirst for combat. Unlike any other creature we've encountered. We're just gonna start that because I need something going in the in the research the room. Have always been elusive. Aside from the occasional monument, I don't imagine most of the people in the city centers have ever actually seen one in person. Knowing now that the elders are apparently suffering at the hands of some terminal affliction explains their absence from the public eye. More importantly. What sort of ailment could possibly be beyond their vast curative abilities? So, um, back on that Berserker autopsy, I feel like Jillian should step in and be like, I can tell you all about these things. <laughs> right? Yeah. This creature represents a near-perfect fusion of human and elder DNA. Though remarkable, it appears as if the creature were unfinished. Perhaps why we were able to ultimately defeat it. Still... This can lead me to only one logical conclusion. We had such hope for you. I believe we have found our avatar. And that's the start of the final plot thread. If you didn't catch it during the fight when the Avatar was actually on the battlescape, there was a, a purple shadow following it around. The Ethereals are putting themselves into human-alien hybrid bodies to get around the genetic degradation or whatever the Ethereals are suffering from. So is this like possession or imprinting or what? Because I don't feel like this is solving any of the problems to go right the fuck back to their bodies. I don't know. That's actually a good question, whether they're just, like, wholly transferring their consciousness into a new body, which I would imagine is within the Ethereal's capabilities. I feel like that's what they're hoping to do, but um, Avatar 0.5 didn't really pan out, so it's just more of, like, a puppet rather than a solution. And, I mean, there is basis for that. Um, the Bureau was somebody basically being puppeted around by an Ethereal, so maybe it's a little of that maybe it's they're trying to transfer their whole cognition into a, a new healthy body i don't know wow i completely forgot the bureau exists <laughs> <sighs> but uh that's it for today everybody thank you for watching uh thank you guava moment for being here with me no problem and we'll see you next time